Hello, welcome to our spooky uh, story time today here at We Bookworms. We are a little bookshop in Northern Ireland. So, um, welcome, welcome. I'm here with my cat because I am the witch from the book Room, Room on the Broom. And I'm also here with our Gruffalo. He's dressed up too. And somewhere here in this bookshop, there is also our bookshop fairy Belle, but she's been rather scared lately. So, um, you know, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that in a few seconds. But first of all, I'm sure you know the room on the broom. The witch had a cat and a very tall hat and long ginger hair, which she wore in a plaid not very long though but yeah I am the witch from Room on the Broom. Now our bookshop fairy Belle has sent us a little poem to read today but she is too scared she's hiding so I'm going to read it to you. Halloween at Wee Bookworms. At first the air is thick and dark no one stirs not even a hedgehog in the park. The bookshop is deadly quiet. And our bookshop fairy Belle is getting ready for her scrumptious candy diet. But now our little fairy is getting rather wary as she hears an odd sound. But there should be no one around. Footsteps, stomp, 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 can be heard out there in the night. There is also a very, very strange bright light. Suddenly, one ghostly face appears and Belle must face her biggest fears. One by one, another creature takes shape at the bookshop's door. And our little fairy can only think of hiding somewhere underneath the crooked floor. The shop's doorbell makes a loud jingle and in come a lot of spooky beings all ready to mingle. Two white ghosts, a vampire with a black cloak and a witch with a broom can be seen and a tiny monster that is rather green. Then suddenly, Belle has an idea. Oh, these are just children. I do not need to fear. Our little fairy is ready to welcome each new bookshop guest. She knows that these spooky bookworms are truly the best. Finally, Belle gives the children a few sweet treats for their journey back to the ghostly streets. That was very good. Thank you very much, Belle Bookworm, wherever you are. And now we are going to read another uh, wee tale. Uh, Donkey Soup, it's called. An Irish Bog Im Tale. And it was written by a Belfast author. He's called Richard McCloskey Wall. Please check out his Facebook and his Instagram as well. And it was illustrated by Kevin McHugh. Donkey Soup. The bog imps of Ireland are an odd little race with a root on their head and odd eyes in their face. Not a gnome nor a fairy, they are commonly found in the peat box of Ireland with their heads in the ground. They take pies from the larder and hens from the coop, but the thing imps love best is hot donkey soup. Hedgerood woke early on the fifth day of spring. He rummaged in his grub pouch, but he couldn't find a thing. Then far off in the distance, up at Granny Greybeard's farm, 
her great fat hairy donkey started braying in alarm. That's it! Oh, <laughs> that's it, thought little hedge root. I must gather, gather up a troop to grab old Greybeard's donkey for hot, sweet donkey soup. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel. Where am I? <laughs> it's live. <laughs> I hope you can see it now. Um, who are these crafty bokkins? Oh, we're gonna move the camera. <laughs> Who are these crafty bog imps that will set out on this quest? In number, they make maybe just three, but these three are the best. Hedgeroot, he's the leader, dressed in torn and tattered tweed. The only vice that Hedgeroot has is impish donkey greed. Dry leaves, oh so clever, with brains beyond compare. He writes a magic silver hair that can take the bog imps anywhere. Muckfoot, she is the bravest and is sure to catch the beast. The wee bog imps of Ireland will have a fatty feast. They gallop off towards the farm with nets and traps and ropes. A little band of bog imps with great big donkey hopes. They sneak towards the donkey with a flutter in their hearts. Hedgewood leaps to grab her, but she lifts her tail and farts. Muckford takes control now. She is fearless as you see, but as she runs toward the beast, she slips in donkey pee. <gasps> now steps up young Dryleaf, the brains of our small group. But wait, what's that atop his head? <gasps> oh no, it's donkey poop! Our bog imps are defeated and their soup bowls will be dry. So why is Muckfoot smirking? There's a twinkle in her eye. Now look beneath her armpit. Something seems to be awry. We Muckfoot done, done the dirty deed of stealing Greybeard's Old Granny Greybeard's laughing as she sees the imps retreat. They will never catch her donkey, so she leaves them pies to eat. Very smart. That was a wonderful tale. Um, and here there's a lovely recipe for donkey soup as well. So you need one large donkey, finely chopped, one carrot, freshly stolen, three dried sparrow legs, uh-huh, half a bucket of pond water, easy to get, and two chicken lips. Hmm. And then you only have to cook the soup on low heat for three hours, and then you've got lovely donkey soup. What a lovely wee story. You can get um, the donkey soup, uh, um, an Irish bock and tail um, on our website as well. So there you go. And of course, we've got one more very, very spooky fairy tale for you. And that is Hansel and Gretel from Germany, from the Brothers Grimm, of course. So I'm going to read this little tale now. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel lived with their father and stepmother beside a great forest. One night their father, who was a poor woodcutter, told his wife that they had no money left. I don't know how we shall feed ourselves, he sighed. His wife had no love for Hansel and Gretel and saw this as a chance to be rid of them. We must take the children into the forest tomorrow and leave them there, she told her husband. Then we'll only have two mouths to feed. 
The woodcutter tried to protest, but his wife wouldn't listen. If you refuse, husband, all four of us shall starve, she said. Hansel and Gretel overheard their stepmother's plan. Don't worry, Hansel, said Gretel. I'll look after you. She put on her jacket, crept out into the, into the moonlit garden, and filled her pockets with white pebbles. Next morning, as, as the family walked into the forest, Gretel secretly dropped the pebbles along a path. When they were deep in the woods, the stepmother told Hansel and Gretel to rest. Wait here while your father and I cut some wood, she said. Hansel and Gretel waited all day, but no one came to fetch them. We'll never find our way home alone, cried Hansel. However, when night fell and the moon appeared, Gretel's white pebbles glowed brightly, showing them the path home. Hansel and Gretel arrived home tired and hungry, only to receive a scolding from their stepmother. It's your own fault. We called, but you didn't come, she snapped. The following day, she insisted that they return to the forest. This time, Gretel didn't have a chance to gather any pebbles, so she took a crust of bread from the kitchen and dropped crumbs along the path. Once more, the children were left in the forest, but when evening came and the moon appeared, there wasn't one breadcrumb to be seen, for birds had eaten them all. I'm sure we shall find our own way home, said Gretel bravely. Hansel and Gretel set off through the forest. Before long, they smelled something sweet and delicious. To their surprise, they found a house made of golden gingerbread with a roof of little cakes. The children were so hungry that they broke off pieces to eat. At once, an old woman opened the door. She smiled kindly at them. If you are hungry, my dears, come inside, she said. Hansel and Gretel stepped into the gingerbread house. The old woman gave them sugared pancakes and apple tart and then offered them so two soft beds. Soon they were fast asleep. Early next morning, however, the children discovered they'd been tricked by a witch. The old woman pulled Hansel out of bed and locked him in a stable. Then she ordered Gretel to cook for her. When your brother is fattened up, I shall eat him, she declared. There was no escape. Every day, Hansel had to stick his finger through a hole so the witch could feel how plump he'd grown, but he cleverly poked a bone from his dinner out instead. The witch had bad eyesight and was easily fooled, but after four weeks, she grew impatient. Today, I sh shall eat that boy, fat or thin, the witch told Gretel. Climb into the oven, girl, to see if it is hot. Gretel suspected the witch intended to cook her first. The oven door is stuck, she replied. Nonsense, snapped the witch. She bent down and opened it. In an instant, Gretel pushed her into the hot oven and slammed the door shut. Then Gretel released Hansel from the stable. Together they explored the gingerbread house and found jewels to fill their pockets. Meanwhile, the woodcutter had been desperately worried about his children. When his wife suddenly fell ill and died, he came to search for them in the forest. To his joy, he found Hansel and Gretel searching for the path home. Thanks to the witch's jewels, the woodcutter's family never went hungry again. You've got some shout-outs. <laughs> oh, do I? I have some shout-outs. So, oh, <coughs> what have I got here? Good luck. Oh, gosh, I can't read you. <laughs> so, um, there is, um, I can't read the, is that Leo? Dex and Leo. Dex and Leo, yeah. Five years and two years from Johnny McCamley. Five years and two years from Johnny McCamley. Then there's Hazel O'Connor. Plus, thanks. Oh, no, that's a thanks for oh. telling us to, to show the images. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> you probably heard that too. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then the Jackies, I think, is that right? Or the Jacks. Or the Jacks. Depends if you're posh. <laughs> and then we've got Dara and Shia from Rory Morgan. I hope that's all right. Oh. I don't know what that means now. Then we've got um, Imer and Aiden. Uh, Erin with her own copy of Donkey Soup. Yay! Of a Donkey Soup fan. Well done. A good job following Fine. along. I don't know what. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and then I, can't, I really can't read my husband's writing. Yeah, I pre, pre, what? What does that mean? <laughs> we need to practice so that's that. Prapti. Prapti. Then Sophie and Julie McCormick. No, I, I, I can read that. Yeah, though. you got that. Sophie and Julie McCrothers. Sorry. Miles Aswell and Anne Mary. And what what is the last one? <laughs> uh, so sorry. I will call my. That's Seven Glen. Seven Glen. And we're going to soon. And then an Oliver Seven from Derbyshire. Ryan and Finn from Oliver. Tipperary. Hi from Aiden and Leah. Abby and Luke from Slane. Oh. Matilda and Galway. What a great name. Oh, Matilda. Hello. <laughs> Matilda Breffnack is even better. It sounds like a book. Uh, Marie and Leash. Marie uh, and Leash. Lily Jane. Love this from Galway. Thank you. <laughs> Roisin and... Faye. I hope you can hear him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Orla and Dare, Sarah and Philippos. Oh, hello. <laughs> and I hope we didn't miss anyone. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And sometimes I can't see it, so I don't know what's going on. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to do a Christmas story time as well. So please remember that. Um, I'm going to post that on our Facebook page again. And um, there's only one thing left to say, I think. There's a couple of things left to say. Oh, there are a couple Hello of things. Hello to Frankie Sue from Stoke and Trent, Orla from Tamworth. Uh, wow. Yeah, I know. This is from That's amazing. L Lo Anis. We love your story. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Sir Sula, uh, Martha in Southampton, uh, Ayanna and Shyam, who turned five this week. Happy wow. birthday. Wow, happy birthday. Orla and Tamworth. Finn and Lucy and Calvin, James and Leeds. Oh my goodness. Oliver, who's three, and Castle Dawson. Oh. Deb and Ezra. Shadow the dog. I oh, like Shadow the dog. Bethany <laughs> from Shropshire. Roisin and Aaron in Dublin. Wow. Holly and Isla in Balna Hench. It's so far away. And there's Cr <laughs> Crawley and Charlie and Bangor. Oh my goodness. Thank That's absolutely much. amazing, guys. Oh, again, thank you so much for joining us. But now there's only one thing left to say. <laughs> And that is, well, two things. Have a lovely, lovely Halloween day. And in general, happy Halloween. So thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm oh. Seven Glenn in Boston. I'm Liliana Scarlet Green. So <laughs> wow. I'm Freya and I'm Trump. But otherwise, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And hope to see you again. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Bye-bye.